to Grazing Hell, the one and only podcast made by an actual cow. And today we've got a very special guest for the second time, and that is... champ. Yes! Ethan is (laughs) online. You are here online with me. I I am on... We're both online today. Exactly. (laughs) And pretty much every day, because, you know... That's how we how we be. We do be like that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, how how are you doing on this fine day, Ethan? Pretty good. You know, I, I made myself blackberry lemonade the other day. Blackberry lemonade. Ooh. Mm-hmm. So yeah, how had... does one go about doing that? <laughs> well, I had the like frozen lemonade. And mm-hmm. I was like, you know, that's boring. So mm. I just, I, you know, you throw blackberries in there and then you get one of those like potato mashers and then you kind of just mash that all into the, uh, into the lemonade and then you just filter out the blackberry remnants. It's really good. Oh. <laughs> okay. No, that does sound good. I, um, my memories, when I hear blackberries, I think of like walking around as a kid, like, and it, I don't know if this is a big thing in the US, but like blackberry bushes are quite a thing mm-hmm. here and you the pick bramble. them off and then you eat them and you, and yeah. sometimes you get a bit of an icky tummy if you uh, <laughs> use ones that are, you know, not quite ready yep. yet, not ripe yet, but th- that's okay. You know, you live and learn. And I also think of the Hunger Games with the berries. It's not blackberries, but they're just berries. You know, have you seen the Hunger Games or read it? I, I saw it like when when they came out, and I don't. Oh, remember okay. Anything about well, there's that. this whole thing where they have the berries, and Peter and Katniss, like, because they're the last one standing, they're poisonous berries, and they're like, "We'll both mm-hmm. eat the berries if you don't let us both win oh, and I live." Do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, it's a uh, yeah, it's it's epic stuff, you know, revolutionaries. <laughs> but um, yeah. speaking of revolutions, um, or more the status quo um mm-hmm. we're going to talk about a very special gent today mm-hmm. um very special indeed um what are your opinions on a man named uh his his legal name i believe is uh ben shapiro but as um i mentioned before we were recording my uh nickname for him today is ben shabubi <laughs> uh i think as you know, just as my friend, uh, he, mm-hmm. I'm a big fan. You know, <laughs> oh, I, yeah. Most of the things he says, I think, are perfect, eloquent. Mm. I mm-hmm. think he's definitely grassroots, not funded by oil billionaires. Not at mm. all. No, no, of course not. Never. Um, <laughs> are you familiar with no, the Daily Wire? His... Uh, you, is it just on YouTube? Yeah, YouTube channel, his, his, his media outlet yeah it's like a media company um Mm -hmm. that i think there's articles on there or something um that was literally founded on a two million dollar investment from one oil billionaire i mean same with my channel (laughs) yeah who doesn't take a little bit of oil money you know (laughs) people keep asking who's the cow oil baron (laughs) <laughs> yeah. yes you know <laughs> you know um yeah i mean he's um he's a, he's such a great he's such an entertaining guy that's what i love about him he might yeah. have terrible opinions he might be anti-choice he might be amazingly homophobic but he's so entertaining he is. you know he continues to outdo himself he does and so you know what, what when i say these two words to you um, so two phrases. Uh, so the first being Ben Shabibo and the second mm. being sex. How do you think those two things relate? Uh, those two topics, do they intersect? What's the Venn diagram there? I was going to say, yeah, if there was a Venn diagram, I think they'd be <laughs> in like separate continents. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Ben knows what sex is considering, Ooh. uh, his WAP debacle. Oh, yes, yes. Editor of the pod. Um, I've now got an editor. Not, not to brag. Uh, put yeah. in Ben Shabibo Wop uh, gaff here. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I have this theory because he has children. I can't remember how many, um, but he has children. Two, yeah. yeah, I believe that he's never had sex with his wife and he's made, he made the children in a lab. I think he just sort of mm-hmm. 
got got extracted the semen um because he's also not a fan of masturbation which we will right. get to today because he also is not a fan of porn big big hater of porn um which is right. what today's episode is about in fact um ethan did a bit of god's work and i <laughs> sort of said i suggested that we do a little book club um read one of ben shabibo's books uh see what we can learn from him and you bless your heart found a free pdf copy because uh, you know we were both were quite adamant that we don't want to give him any money because he's way right. richer than both of us why should we have to pay Absolutely. him his take <laughs> and this book is called porn generation and um i'm just going to do a quick google here and just sort of give people the the stats, like when it came out um, mm. and what the deal is. So, yeah, it's pretty old. It was published in um, May 2005, and it's obviously written by Ben Shabibo. Um, so 2005, let's do some maths. How old was Ben Shabibo at that point? Born mm. in 84. So, oh, wow, he was really young. He was... um. Well, not really young. He was uh, maths 20, uh, 25. No, 26. Because it was 2005, right? Yeah. twenty. Yeah. Oh, he was my age. Okay, actually, no, he wasn't that young. And therefore, <laughs> it's less excusable. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I mean, I think... Uh... I think Ben Shapiro looks like he's 14 and 48 simultaneously. And I think he's I, always kind of You're like so that. right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shall we see if we can... You know what? I'm going to see if I can find an image. Ben Shapiro Young. And There's let's that see. old video of him playing violin. He still kind of looks the same. Oh, when he's a child. And mm -hmm. like, I say ah oh, because all kids are cute. Um, right. Uh, yeah, editor, popping a cheeky little pic of Ben Shabibo Young um, in his... Yeah, 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 you're right. He looks exactly the same, just look with yep. a slightly just worse smaller. haircut. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, smaller, um, maybe I mean, only slightly less authoritarian. From... Yeah, I, well, um, he, he was raised by a liberal, like, musician's family in L.A. Interesting. <laughs> he didn't move How out of L.A. until, ben like, Shibibu? a few years ago. It's like five four, five three. Yeah, he's five six. Oh no, he pretended to be five six. Yes, and there's a bit sure. of discussion online. Um, oh, there's a bit of debate online. Okay, so mm -hmm. some people suggest five five. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's up for debate. So that's interesting. Not that it matters, but I just um, I I do find it interesting how people get height so wrong. And I, I have this yeah. um, where, whether it be on dating profiles or people I meet from who have seen my videos, they always expect me to be tall mm -hmm. and I'm not, I'm 5'3". Yeah, it's so. all it's all energy. It's all vibes. Mm. Ben mm. Shapiro has mm -hmm. short vibes. He like, does. He is short, but he has short vibes. So it's like, even if he's like 5'5", five, five, in my head, he's like 5'2". Yes. Yes, you know? that is a good point. Exactly. And I've met some wonderful people who are below average height, who are men or women or non-binary or whatever. Yeah, like yep. it's, it, it doesn't dictate anything about your personality. But if you clearly like hyper focus, focus on it as an insecurity and you're also a bad person, then in my head, we can make just fun like, of it. Yeah, yeah, we can make fun of it. And it's like it's you're worse for it. <laughs> so. Here's the thing. I think short man syndrome is a thing. And I, I, right. I, I don't like that it's a thing because I think, you know, toxic masculinity is bad. And I think it is bad when people say, I won't date a short man, like, uh, or on a person, in general. You know what I mean? It's silly. It's silly that it's, like, very arbitrary, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, there's nothing wrong with being a small man. But I, in my life, I think I have met short men who are very bitter and upset about the fact that women won't want to date them because of their height but then at the same time they will be disgusted by tall women as <laughs> yeah. if it doesn't go both ways because i have and a friend most uh, women mm, Sorry. exactly no i was just gonna say like i have a friend who's six two as a woman and she says that yeah. men like treated her like a pariah oh man yeah like yeah it's funny to have that simultaneous like you know uh women have too high of a standard for like 
height and then like a woman has to be shorter than me and it's like dude you're five six most women are probably going to be your height and some are going to be way taller like i Mm. it's it's just so weird to me because it's like height is obviously like part of the first impression and like Mm. a lot of people have like their first impression preferences or whatever but it's like i don't know i wouldn't hyper fixate on anything other like like height is like the first thing you notice Mm -hmm, but it's mm -hmm. like i don't know it's just a weird thing to be like yeah this is something that i need in a person because what's the Mm -hmm. what's the practicality of it you know it's like i want a person who's like nice and there's like reasons i want someone to be nice there's no reason i want someone to be tall or short (laughs) yeah yeah and i mean sometimes like people notice patterns where they're like you know i tend to be attracted to people who are taller or shorter or whatever and that's fine but i just find it odd when it's so microscopic so for example Mm -hmm. if you get women who are really petite like me who will be like, I won't date a guy below six foot. And I'm like, why six foot? Why not 5'11"? Like, what is actually the tangible <laughs> yeah, what's the difference? Threshold? Like, why does it really matter? And also, you're mm-hmm. short. That's 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 the thing that gets me. Like, I do like it when someone's taller than me, but most people yeah. are. So, right. it, that, that, and regardless of gender, because I like being the little spoon. <laughs> yeah, and that's valid. And yeah. I think, you know, I, what if, like, the height thing... Like, I'm sure for some people it is just like a, yeah, I don't want to date someone, like on a dating profile. It's like, yeah, I don't want to date someone under this height. But what if it's like a filter for like shitty, insecure men? <laughs> mm, maybe for some. You know, I suppose. For some? Tool, well, interestingly, my tool friend I mentioned earlier, Serena, um, she did say that, oh, I wouldn't bother going on dates with shorter men because my experience was that mm-hmm. they would get upset that yeah. I was taller um so i just decided men who are only a couple like because like that was the pattern she noticed that they were freaked out by it she was like well i'm just not gonna you know yeah so which is interesting right right yeah um but how do we get onto this oh yeah ben shabibo so i am gonna start sharing my screen you know when your sock has turned around and like the floor bit is not on the floor bit? Oh, yeah. Does that make any... Yeah. Am I making any yeah, I know sense? exactly what you're saying. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> okay. Cool. Um, okay. So, um, let, let's... Uh, <laughs> so, uh, oh for people who are listening, e- Ethan and I are going to try and be as... Um, oh, my God. I'm s- I just... I, there's so much going on. Oh, sorry. I nearly fell off my stool, my cow stool. <laughs> Because I'm just floored by how good this is. Oh my. Ethan, yeah. this is so perfect. I'm going to cry. This is so good. Okay. Where do I start? Okay. Um, I don't know. Whew. Okay. So, for. Oh, Jesus. Okay. So, the first thing that's, that, 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 that just came to me was explicit warning lyrics. That warning. I know. I was just going to point that out. Lyrics? Well, I'm guessing he um, refers to some very dirty rap music because he hates rap music. Yeah. Cause he's racist. Word. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but then I saw that there's a review from Anne Coulter. Anne Coulter. And it says <laughs> yeah. this. I just, it's so perfect. Ben Shapiro's writing is smart, informative, and incisive. He is wise beyond his years without losing the refreshing fearlessness of youth. Meanwhile, whilst writing a book about how sex and porn is bad. Fearless? Are you, he's terrified of sex. What are you talking about? What the fuck are you talking so about? So fearless. Oh my God. Fearless by Taylor Swift. Tease. Um, yeah. And it's also, called. Also, bad cover. Yeah, look at that. I mean, it's Awful called cover. Porn Generation. Um, what is that thing that on the on the O in porn? Is that supposed to be like a That's nose ring? That's a piercing. Ring? It's like a lip piercing. A lip piercing. I'll remember when those Maybe. were all the rage. You don't see them that often yeah. now. No, um, I don't think so. Yeah. yeah. But I think, you know, lip piercing means uh, sexual promiscuity, clearly. It does it. Okay, right. Mm-hmm. So According Porn Generation... <laughs> How social liberalism is corrupting our future. Cool. What do you think of that uh, thesis, Ethan? Um, I think it's a nice little dog whistle. I love when uh, right-wingers talk about corruption in our society as if, you know, uh, there's like some scourge that needs to be exterminated. Like it's a... 
it's it's a very like white supremacist like nazi idea Mm -hmm, of like mm -hmm. you know uh there's this like objective societal moralism that's being lost or corrupted by women having autonomy or trans people existing and i think uh this is just a especially because this is from like 2005 it's a great uh look back into when ben was like even a little bit subtle <laughs> yeah Still yeah not subtle no a it's little. not He's trying now he just gets straight to it doesn't he because he knows his audience yeah. and he doesn't Absolutely. waste any time so it's uh, almost impressive um Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, God bless you, Ethan, for finding this. <laughs> oh, fascinating. Okay, so just to look at the table of contents. Um, I mean, how do you want to do this? Do you want to go chronologically? Are there... So- oh, wow. Yeah. I, I just need to go through the titles of these. So I, Yeah, I was just reading the, the chapter. They're title. so <laughs> bloody good. Oh, my God. I just... I pity I pity anyone listening and not seeing this. So, I'm going to read uh. through them, though, so you're not left out. So, chapter one, A Generation Lost. The Real Charlotte Simmons, Truth and Consequences. So, you know, that's dramatic and silly, not particularly funny, but Mm -hmm. this is where it gets good. Chapter two, Fun with Bananas, Sex in the Classroom, (laughs) The Attack on (laughs) Abstinence, The President's Goodnight Blowjobs, Parental Mm -hmm. Abdication. So, chapter three, Campus Carnality. Sex over poker, Check Your Morals at the Dorm, Professors as Parents, all that and a box of press-on nails. A strange new world. And this is my personal... F- oh, well, actually, it's a... Jo- it's a t- I know. It's we'll so get... Fine. We'll get... Yeah. <laughs> Chapter four. <laughs> Chapter four. Pop-Tarts. The Material Girl. Princesses of the Virgin to Whore Kingdom. For more mature audiences. The Fantasy World. And Aoife, do you want to read Chapter five and its sub-chapters? <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll try, but there's certainly a slur in one of the subtitles. Oh, geez, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I did you dirty there. I did you yeah, dirty give there. Give me that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> chapter five, where pimps and hoes run free. There's Didn't supposed to be an e in hoes. That's how you would. Yeah. yeah, you wouldn't spell it that way. It's um, H-O-S, clearly. but he. It's actually got an e in it. But anyway, whatever. Right. Um, where pimps and hoes. <laughs> run free celebrating the dregs of society the uh w slur that is the rhyme with the n-word that was very okay to say in the early 2000s for context uh, but okay yeah um it's a portmanteau of white and the n-word yes as a way to say like why are you behaving in this you know yes quote unquote like not good way mm-hmm. uh really fucked up thing to say and then yes. play a haters which is something i would love to hear ben shapiro say out loud oh no play a haters um play a haters. like what if what if uh <laughs> you know practically and a uh, uh, player haters uh what ask people <laughs> um I, 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 hypothetically don't hate the player hate the game Oh my god, there's more! Oh my god, there's, there's, oh my there's, god, there there's 12! There's 12 <laughs> chapters! I will okay. say, I will say, for those watching, yeah. because it's this, an extremely legal, legitimate copy of the book for legal purposes, um, there is some, like, corruption in the formatting, so the PDF uh-huh. has, like, a little bit of, like, like, the headers and footers don't look right, but other than that, it should be... So if you see like gibberish, it's not Ben didn't <laughs> accidentally <laughs> type that. It's, he it's got an the, editor. It's the very legal PDF. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> chapter six, teeny boppers. Um, chapter seven, Abba crappy and bitch. <laughs> That's a fucking great band name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, chapter eight, TV versus virginity. Chapter nine, porn and popcorn. Hell oh yeah. my god, where what is this subject chapter homosexuality chic? I mean, yeah. Oh, we got to read that one. Yeah, we got to um chapter 10, the lotion picture industry. <laughs> chapter 11, taking a stand, chapter 12, round table. Um so I mean, this there's there's, there's so, so much, much. There's so yeah. much here. I do wonder, we don't have to like read it all, obviously, because I think that would be ridiculous. Mm-hmm. But 
maybe we try and go somewhat chronologically, you know? Yeah. So we gotta save. Yeah. We can't just jump into all the juiciest bits. We gotta we gotta work our way up, right? Right, right. So do you want to? Um, should we just start with chapter one? Just see what we're in for. Yeah. Is there I think an we should intro? like read his introduction. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, you're right about the formatting. It's a little weird, but yeah. So I'm pretty sure that first I is probably like. Like okay. a big fancy I, and it just didn't translate, so it's I am a member. Because this is a completely legit copy, just for legal reasons. This is legit. Mm-hmm. We bought it in Minecraft. We, I, I paid extra, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you paid double the asking price because you're mm-hmm. so generous. Yeah, this is this is this is exactly how Ben Shapiro types all of his books. No yes. one's read them, so no <laughs> one knows. But <laughs> this is. Uh, this is the quote up top is yes. from Shagged <laughs> equals. It's it's a real person that Ben knows. Oh my god! Actually, Ethan, I might get you. I'll, I'll read it out, and then could I get you to just check who actually said that quote? So the quote is: yeah. "Virtue is harder to be got than knowledge of the world. If lost in a young man, is seldom recovered." So who actually said that? It's not Chag Ed D equals. To, to the power of P. It's like an equation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, let's, who, well, it's like a, it's like a word scramble. Who could that be? Uh, it's PhD. Right. It, it, yeah. Who though? <laughs> Ch- Chag E PhD. <laughs> Who's Chag E? Chag E PhD. <laughs> Edward Chang, no. I don't know if we can f- even find it. Here, I'll look up the quote. Virtue. Yeah, virtue is harder to be got than knowledge of the world. Oh, it's a quote from John Locke. John Locke. Okay, so John Locke, uh, for those who don't know, he's a philosopher who came up with the whole, uh, he, he was big on like determinism and that kind of thing. Mm. Um, and he was also apparently very boring. Yeah, he's as a person. I, I hate that quote. It's like it's so attributing that to like porn and corruption of young men is very silly. Yeah, it feels like a stretch. I feel like you could find some fascist who said something much more obvious, but exactly, Locke okay. is like, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> whenever Ben Shapiro and and his ilk appeal to Locke, it, it 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 sounds like they're trying to have some like moral like objectivism. Mm-hmm. Uh, like you know oh this like very well-known philosopher said it that like you recognize from your high school history class so Mm -hmm. you you know so it gives me some sort of credibility and it's like no you this doesn't even apply like this quote doesn't apply to anything right now (laughs) it's just to sound clever really Mm -hmm. isn't it so i'm gonna just read the first paragraph or two and then we can talk about it i won't read everything in full i think we can skip Mm -hmm. pages and and stuff but i think for the first you know, part of the book, I guess we should at least have the yeah, first Yeah, we want to get an idea of the tone. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so okay? here Is we go. Is your body rejecting the mission? I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to try and read it in his voice, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to the whole mm-hmm. time. And I think that would be annoying for the listeners. So I'll do it just for the first couple sentences. Sure, yeah. I am a member of a, of a lost generation. <laughs> <laughs> we have lost our, our values. We have lost our faith. And we have lost ourselves. As societal standards and traditional values have declined, and the crassest elements of sexual deviancy and pornography have taken over the public square, it is the youngest Americans who have paid the price. Never in our country's history has a generation been so empowered, so wealthy, so privileged, and yet so empty. Cool. This is 2005. Um, This book is not written from the perspective of a parent. A sociologist (laughs) or a teacher, but of a peer. (laughs) This is my generation, the porn generation. And and for good or ill, we are America's future. (laughs) Oh my God. Okay, that's enough. Yeah, Ben should be my voice. Go on, Ethan. (laughs) Um, Ben was born in 1984, which means he's a millennial. Uh huh. Um, Oh, 1984. Yes. George Orwell. 
George is... Orwin's 1894. <laughs> <laughs> Animal Farm. Um, wait, that's the actual name. I was trying to make a joke and I just said it. <laughs> yeah. Animal Barn. <laughs> Animal Crossing. Um, I got you. I got you. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so, so he's a millennial, but I'm mm-hmm. sure he would probably identify closer to Gen X because Gen X mm-hmm. ends in 1981, I think, because my mm-hmm. dad's technically a millennial and I think that's funny. Um, mm. and he was born in 81 and I'm sure he's like, he's saying, you know, his generation is Gen X millennial. Mm-hmm. How is that more of like a porn generation than the previous generation like Mm. i guess because he's probably going to make the point that like internet accessibility and you know teaching anything other than abstinence in school is corrupting the youth or whatever because it always has to do with children with Mm. conservatives it always Mm -hmm. has to do with corrupting children which is what they love to do and yet Mm -hmm. they claim everyone else is doing um so i just don't understand like why is he acting as if porn is suddenly a problem when it has existed mm. since like the beginning of time? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, I'm sure he'll address like, you know, oh, it's, it's the abundance of it now. And it's like, <laughs> it, it was still like readily accessible when Playboy was like the primary thing, mm-hmm. like whatever. <laughs> oh, it, it's, it's going to get better. I think Ethan, um, I think so. Over the latter half of the 20th century, the forces of moral relativism, radical feminism, and generational nihilism have gradually destroyed the foundation of our own greatness. Instead of adopting stronger moral standards, our society has embraced the lure of personal fulfillment. Wait. What's wrong what with a, personal what? fulfillment? <laughs> what's wrong with Yeah, that? what the fuck? Aren't libertarians all about fucking, like... Yeah. Uh, independence and like personal rights and what what is it pursuit of happiness bullshit i'm so <laughs> confused ethan i'm He's i'm saying, lost ben shapiro is saying that rather than these selfish uh shallow pursuits of the flesh we must pursue a collectivist future for the greater good of our uh you know, our, our society saying like band together, form communes, if you will, collectives. Communist of, uh, communes? Of, well, <laughs> Vegan you know, communes? Just <laughs> collectives of workers that demand their rights or something. Are you saying unions, Ethan? No. I would never advocate <laughs> for unions. <laughs> no. Minimum <of> wage, bam. <laughs> 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 unions are outside agitators that serve only to create a divide between the family of the workplace and the workers themselves <laughs> <laughs> okay so oh god here we go okay i'll read I'll, do you want yeah. me to take the next paragraph or are we popcorning <laughs> yeah you go you go you go yeah <laughs> uh i'm trying to like skim to make sure it's like worth reading and it's not boring but i think it's all gonna be pretty good um, <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> In a world where all values are equal, where everything is simply a matter of choice, narcissism rules uh, rules the day. <laughs> God, that, wait, what? Oh, where everything is simply a matter of choice, narcissism rules the day. Our culture has bred hollow young men obsessed with self-gratification. Young women are told to act like sex objects and enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, only recently is that a thing. Yeah. Um, and it's the leftists that are causing that, not the oh, yeah. fucking... Uh, yeah. Not the conservatives. Okay. Mm. Um the revisionist historians have effectively labeled obscenity as a as a right that the founding fathers sought to protect. Society told the porn generation to find that final moral authority rests inside each of us, and in our own vanity, we listened. What? The final mor is he saying that like you can't make your own decisions? <laughs> like the final yeah. moral authority being like your own conscience? <laughs> well, I, I think and I'm guessing this is the thesis of the book. Uh, yeah. You know, it, the way you have sex as an individual, we know he believes this because mm-hmm. he's homophobic. The way you have sex yeah. as an individual affects the greater society, which, <laughs> no, it, it, it's fine. You yeah. do you. As long as if everyone mm-hmm. involved is a consenting, informed adult, like you do you, mm-hmm. it's fine, boo. Yeah. Do you want to go on for the next one and just see what sure. good goodness is in there? 
yeah, I, I think I think this is gonna be good. Are you gonna Let do the Ben Shabibo I'm... voice? Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm going for it. Oh, good for you. Go, <laughs> the mainstream you go. acceptance. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> the matri- the <laughs> the mainstream acceptance of pornography has become a social fact. Order a movie. Walk past your local news shop. Log on to the internet. It's everywhere in your blog poster, <laughs> your newspaper, your inbox. <laughs> Ben, I think it's a self-report. <laughs> replace faith and family with a warped, warped image of sex and self-satisfaction that ridicules the concept of purity and mangles the most sacred ideals of matrimony. Oh my god. Porn exists and it's mangling the sacred ideals of matrimony. He sounds like a Catholic theologian mm, from like mm-hmm. the 1400s. Mm. Like, what the fuck? Well, so married I'm castrating myself both. so as to never feel temptation. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, he probably would if he could. Um, yeah. Oh, he's very. Who's to say he hasn't already done it? No, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I say, mm-hmm. I think, yeah, these kids were made in a lab. I think he was made in yeah. a lab. I mean, he was literally like, he might as well have been as far as his like position as a media pundit because he's perfectly formulated to appeal to the audience that he appeals to. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, you can't you can't deny that he's good at what he does. Um, mm-hmm. Which is his brain was made in a lab yeah. at the least because all of his ideas come from t- think tanks. Exactly, exactly. Um, okay, I'm gonna just read the next couple of paragraphs and then maybe we'll start skipping about. Um, mm-hmm. Traditional authority. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna do the Ben Shabiba voice just because. <laughs> yeah. I feel. I feel bad for the listeners. Um, traditional yeah, authority figures, parents, community leaders, even God, have been discarded. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? <laughs> That's God just has not been discarded, true. Tara. Yeah. Like, it's there's over. no religious people. It's not like they're no. a huge fucking voting bloc even to this day. Um. I- George W. Bush was only president at the time this was written. Yeah, fucking hell. <laughs> the new authority figures of the porn generation are many, and nearly all are members of the coarsened pop culture, one fed by the destructive malaise of the relativist world. Sex ed instructors. God, yeah, because sex education. Fucking hell, we don't want that, do we? University In professors. There was so much of that. Yeah, exactly. What? University professors, advertisers, Hollywood actors, MTV artists, and assorted celebrities, A, B, and C list. Act as if as the new elders of a church of corrupt, shallow, and materialistic humanism. Okay, right. Oh, God por- forbid humanism. Ugh. God, yeah. The porn generation now inhabits a world where empowerment means sex with no strings attached. I mean, it does for some people. The old faith and traditional morality was too bourgeois, archaic, sexist, and closed-minded for this brave new world. I mean, our new God yeah. is tolerance of all behavior. <laughs> our new credo is live and let live. Ben, you describe no. yourself as a libertarian. <laughs> ben, we come can't on. have tolerance we can't live and let live that's a that's bad that's communism oh my god this next paragraph i've just seen some bits and i'm so excited to read it so i'm just gonna Uh-oh. read it as children members of the porn generation are presented with morally subversive sexual education programs at increasingly younger ages nine-year-olds are lectured about condom use 12-year-olds are pushed to make decisions about their sexual orientation. 15-year-olds are expected to have said goodbye to virginity. Source, Ben? There's no, there's no yeah, footnote literally. here. Where's the footnote? <laughs> I just... Well, I think it's a... <sighs> what a self-report that it's like, he thinks that just because kids are taught what sex is, that by 15 they would have already not already had sex. When it's like, in fact, if you don't teach kids what sex is, they're more likely to not only have sex, but get pregnant. Like, there's a reason that young kids are taught about sex ed, and it's to prevent teen pregnancy. And, you know, exactly. And there's, like, there's data that where, you know, it's correlation, um, but, you know, where Mm. sex education delays sexual activity in some cases Mm -hmm. so the more yeah Yeah. exactly knowledge is power okay so let's just see what more he's got to say here in college drug use alcohol use and sexual experimentation are the norm as one harvard girl told me we're jaded and it's fun fun to this girl meant trips to amsterdam to smoke different types of marijuana to others fun (laughs) means binge drinking or random sex i mean oh my God. I don't disagree with that. That that does well, sound yeah, quite fun. Like, 
it's that's like the tamest like he could have said like cocaine he could have said like he could have said so many things weed is other than weed drinking and sex like 2005 weed had a little bit of a different there's a little bit of a different attitude but even still it was still especially even among conservatives weed has been popular for decades but like Mm. i just don't like i think ben is just ace (laughs) and if he is that's absolutely fine ace and sex repulsed And, and yeah that's totally fine that's valid i just think that he is in such denial of it that he makes it everyone else's fucking problem yeah i mean I mean, I mean, I mean. Okay, so he lists a bunch of stats here um, from a study. And yeah. it, it's a survey of college students. And apparently 46% had had a one-night stand. 43% had cheated on a steady partner. 21% had tried to get someone drunk or high to get them into bed. That is very fucked up. Unacceptable, um, yeah. Uh, uh, 32% had slept with someone knowing they would never call again. Um, on average, respondents had had 6.4 sex partners in their lives. For team, well, how old are they? Like, they're yeah. college aged, so they're probably right. anywhere from like 19 to 22, 24. Right. Okay. So 14% had six to nine partners, 7% had 10 to 14, 4% had 15 to 19, and 3% had 25 or more. 36% of respondents had had sex with someone they didn't like, and 28% had used pot during sex. <gasps> well, as in like smoking literally whilst you're like grinding? Is that? <laughs> yeah. Or does he mean like you were having sex high? <laughs> I don't think Ben knows the difference. I was going to say, because that's uh, like, you've only got two pairs of, like, two hands, right? <laughs> yeah. Unless hey, I mean, he means pot brownie? Like, hold the... Yeah. Well, I, I mean, so you said used pot, so it could have been anything, but, like, uh... you know, you can hold the joint to the to your partner's lips and vice versa. Oh, that's quite romantic, I <laughs> that's guess. That's romantic. If you're weedy, yeah. weedy folks. If you're like um the people, <laughs> you know that video that went viral years ago, and it was like, you full stop and it was these two trader joe's uh hip like white hippies and they were like um mm. y- you know the one do you know the one i'm talking about does that mean I anything think so okay and they were just like um really uh, i don't know oh, how yeah. To- yeah, yeah 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 the one that cody yeah, and noel yeah. made a video on right um yeah like that i imagine them like with weed during sex being like, oh my God, and the love we it's spread like a... through the weed. Yeah. <laughs> With them, it's probably more than just weed. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to read a couple more and then we can go from there. The limitless sexual no. license of the porn generation is not without consequence. It leads to spiritual desensitization, <laughs> emotional removal, and lack of commitment. The sad fact that Tom Wolfe's literary characterization of a young girl charlotte simmons carries enormous weight because it is so true okay so he okay if i'm correct he's about to talk about a fictional character to make his point Mm -hmm. and yeah let me just okay let me just quickly check this so i'm not talking out my arse okay so he is referring to a character named charlotte simmons from a book by tom wolf which came out in 2004 so Mm -hmm. and it's uh to describe it uh, it's a it's a novel concerning sexual and status relationships at fictional at the fictional dupont university um, Wolf researched the novel by talking to students at North Carolina, Florida, Penn, Duke, and Stanford, and Michigan. So this is a novel that was written by a man who was fucking... Was fucking... What? Are you joking? <laughs> Wait. No. What? So... 2004 hold the phone hold the phone so when this book came out in 2004 it was written by a man who was 74 so this is so ben is referencing a book (laughs) written by like from the perspective of a fictional college girl written by a 74 year old man so not so instead of interviewing a real human girl he's referencing a fictional girl 
What? To add it to entry, the fictional girl is written by a 70-something-year-old man. But Tara, you have to understand this 74-year-old <laughs> man went and talked to college students and they definitely were comfortable sharing their genuine sexual experiences with him when he asked about them. I'm sure I, they told him 100% of the truth and he totally got legitimate information from them. I Okay, so here's a quote from the book from the fictional character's fucking perspective. At DuPont, everybody thinks you're kind of of some kind of twisted, uptight, pathetic little goody-goody if you haven't had sex. Girls will come right out and ask you. Girls you hardly even know. They'll come right and uh, come right out and ask you in front of other girls if you're a VC, a member of the Virgins Club. And if you're stupid enough to say yes, it's an... And then this is a weird typo because this book is perfectly legal. Like you have some sort of terrible <laughs> character defect. There's something perverted about that. Simmons realizes that. that without the safety net of family morality, she is in serious moral <laughs> danger. Right here, right here, <laughs> right here was the point where she either cried out or she didn't cry out. <laughs> Mama, only you can help me. What else do I have? Listen to me. Let me tell you the truth. Beverly doesn't just return in the dead of the night and go to bed really late. She brings boys into bed and they rut, rut, rut with it. What? The fuck does that mean? Barely four. I think that's another. Oh, uh, okay, right, right, right. Okay, so basically, yeah, um, girl, rich, yeah, they're just. Oh my god. Okay, so she's describing her roommate having sex, and then Ben says this. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> we gotta read the the quote at the end. Rich girls with fifteen hundred SATs cry out, "I need some ass." <laughs> I'm gonna go out and get laid. <laughs> Mama, what am I to do? <laughs> But Charlotte yeah, doesn't cry totally out. that's something that happens. But Charlotte doesn't cry out to her family for help, and she doesn't extract herself from the moral mire that surrounds her. By the end of the book, she, is, she has capitulated to peer pressure, lost her virginity, and given in to the values of her surrounding environment. She has undergone no. deep depression, and she has emerged a shallower person for her experiences. I just want to stress to the listeners and viewers, this is a fictional character yeah Ethan could you just talk for a minute because I I just need a moment <laughs> <laughs> yeah take your time take your time I think I think it is really funny that like we we Tara you had read the synopsis of the book and it said that he went around and like researched this book by talking to college students and it's like that's what you got Rich girls with 1,500 <laughs> SATs cry out, I need some ass. I mean, I, I, I will say I, I did go to university and I need some ass, so. <laughs> Coincidence? <laughs> I think not. Liberals, you claim, you claim that porn is not a problem and yet you need some ass. I Curious. am university educated and I do like me some ass, so. Yeah, you know. well, I'm a, I'm a college dropout and... <laughs> I, I guess I'm celibate. <laughs> that college was the, it, that's all it takes. Wow. One year of college and you're promiscuous as it gets, apparently. Uh, I, I, uh, I. This is better than I ever could have imagined. Dreamt of. Yeah, I mean, it is kind of amazing, but like, what? Oh, yeah. God, I just saw the word, I just saw the phrase latent homosexuals. Ooh. Should we skip to that bit? Um. I think so. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Do you want to read that paragraph starting defining deviancy? Yeah, let me take your, uh, <laughs> take the weight off Thank a bit. you. Um, God bless you. Yeah, the, the paragraph that talks about latent homosexuals. Defining deviancy up, what? Defining deviancy up has meant, what? What does that mean? Defining up? Yeah, defining deviancy up. Has <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? Whatever. <laughs> just, ben, you are so... I, I, just a quick aside. I don't know if you saw the recent tweet where Ben said, uh, because of the Roe v. Wade overturning... Uh, Supreme Court return, overturning Roe v. Wade, which is a fucking travesty, um, someone tweeted at Ben... Or someone tweeted, um, my my gay friend, uh, my gay man friend is you know asking what he can do to help, and Ben quote tweeted and said, as a gay man, uh, I've been informed that he has you know the right to no opinion to this and you should have told him to shut up and it's like ben 
you constantly talk about how you were educated at Harvard Law mm. and you can't even structure a sentence properly. Yeah. Like the rest of that tweet is like incomprehensible. Like he, it doesn't make any sense. Like he's not good at structuring his thoughts, especially when he gets really horny about women losing their rights or about like decapitating gay people or whatever he's into. I mean, there, I just want to quickly uh, as mention as well. Um, he, so... I, I, I am I'm a hack and a fraud. This is not an original idea. Um, <laughs> the One of my favorite podcasts ever, Behind the Bastards, uh, they often read out mm-hmm. bad right-wing books. Um, so, <laughs> you know, I, I'm a hack and a fraud. I, this is not my original idea. Um, and they have, I believe, read this one and they've read Ben Shabibo's novel. And the novel, I think his fiction, fictional prose is even worse than his nonfiction. The yeah. writing is really poor. And bear in mind, that's after editing, assuming he had an editor. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's bizarre. I mean, I, being educated doesn't necessarily mean you'll be a good writer. Like, I don't necessarily think I'm a brilliant writer, but I also don't write whole fucking books like this. So Right. You don't put, you know, New York Times bestseller in your Twitter bio. Which you um, probably get from, you know, bulk buying, which, yeah, there's a whole thing. Um, yeah. I can't remember where, but I'll, I'll link it, like, which explains why everyone and their auntie is a New York best time seller. Yeah. So, but anyway. It's, it's not hard to hit. It's just the threshold of sales you need within a certain period of time. And when you're Ben and you have a large you know, amount of disposable resources, you can probably just buy your own book. Exactly. And it also counts digital downloads as well. So if you just buy fucking 6,000 copies of the Kindle version, then well, there you go. Yeah. Um, Anyway, sorry, Ethan, you carry on. Share the magic. I I went off track. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Defining deviancy up has meant (laughs) something, has meant, God, it's so stupid, has meant stigmatizing those who obey the dictates of traditional sexual morality as fools ascetics or latent homosexuals oh so he's saying if you don't have sex with everyone in sight you're called gay ben is just venting that people called him gay because he doesn't want and to, to him that's people. an insult and yeah to him that's a tragedy and yeah it's really upsetting whereas if someone says it like hey you're gay i'm like thank you yeah hell yeah <laughs> you're looking gay today <laughs> oh, thank you thank you Ethan. oh <laughs> yeah go on it is oh sorry it, it is also meant stigmatizing, stigmatizing moralists as fascists and hypocrites. Fascists because we wish to impose our morality on others. But you do, though. And that's what fascists also do. Is that a coincidence? or mm. Mm. Hypocrites because inevitably some of us have not been completely pure. What? Okay, so oh I just love that the next sentence is, We are not fascists! If you ever have to say, if you ever have to say, I'm not a fascist, maybe look inwards and assess why you mm-hmm. need to proclaim that you're not a fascist. Why well, you have to say that, yeah. It's usually a red flag in it. <laughs> it's like when someone says, I'm not a wife beater. It's like, no one asked. Yeah, like, oh, okay. <laughs> good. <laughs> I've never hit a woman. This is good news. <laughs> so, mm. <laughs> I promise I haven't. Yeah, it's like, mm, yeah. okay. Um, do, do we want to skip a bit or do we what 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 do we want oh uh, yes let's know, skip it's, it's hard let's skip down anything. to this paragraph i'll read this um the live and let live mm. societal model is a recipe for societal disaster you're literally a fucking liber. you say you're a libertarian i know he's not but he's yeah. he claims to be the myopic question posed by advocates of the new tolerant morality is how does my immoral behavior hurt you that's a good fucking question But the overwhelming Mm -hmm. truth is that these are not individual acts. They literally are. But inherently social acts with social consequences. And when society sanctions and encourages your immoral behavior, uh, weird text because this is legal. Oh, that would have an impact. And it it doesn't just hurt me, but it hurts my future children as well. Oh, fuck off. I'm so sick of conservatives asking us oh to parent God. their children for them. Can we talk about that for a moment, <laughs> yes, Ethan? A yeah. 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 Collectivism is terrible, but you have to you have to factor every moral decision into the into the greater good of my children. Isn't that what every like conservative outrage is about? Pretty much. They're just like, mm-hmm. my yeah. children might see it. And I'm like, well, maybe just like us like keep an eye on your children and make sure they're not watching that channel like parent your children i don't want my yeah i don't want my children to see two gay people kissing but it's okay if they have a gun at 14 (laughs) 
<laughs> Literally. Also, like, I, I love this pa- whole paragraph is so interesting from Ben's perspective, because if we're really going to get academic about it, like Ben is trying to do and failing because he's just a dumb man, like he's literally saying individualism doesn't exist. Mm. He's being anti-individualist and saying we are a like symbiotic society where one action will have an effect on everyone else, which is not true. He's ironically like doing the thing he claims current, like these days that like his straw man communist leftists do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like he is being his own straw man. It's incredible. But he's genuine. I don't get it. It's amazing. Um, I think one... These are not individual acts. I know. It, it, well, th- there's this paragraph here that stuck out to me. So I'll just read that and then I think we'll mm-hmm. skip to the next page because it is very repetitive, yeah. I have to say. Um, mm-hmm. And also, I, I just would love to see the source he used for this, but we'll, I'll, I'll explain in a moment. Yeah. When the stigma left single motherhood, society felt the sting in rising rates of single motherhood and juvenile crime. When the stigma left sexual... licentiousness society felt the sting in rising rates of teen pregnancy sexually transmitted disease emotional emptiness and nihilism your immoral personal behavior may not affect me but exempting your immoral behavior from societal scrutiny certainly does a society without standards is an unhappy unhealthy society a society with no future and all of us have to live in that society oh my god i have so many thoughts on that ethan do you want to go first whilst i look up this source yeah okay i have so many thoughts as well first this sounds like a high school essay he's Uh, sourcing himself oh my god what it's himself the source is himself you can't do that it's his you can't how many times did he do that ethan the source is Ben Shapiro, the radical homosexual agenda and the destruction of standards. He's referencing his own fucking article. You can't do that. I what the fuck? I just, I just, I'm tired. I'm so tired. And when you click the link, like it doesn't. I just, what? Why? The fucking balls on Ben Shapiro. In the first chapter. Okay, I need to go back. To cite himself. It's incredible. Let me just see how the fuck do I get back to our page. Uh, yes, yeah, this page. Oh, was it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, um, okay. High school essay. Ben wrote a high school essay and then he cited himself. I... I mean, that's, I mean, I love the confidence, but it's not really yeah. ethical writing. I, and there's, no, it's not. But also, like, when the stigma left sexual licentiousness and when the stigma left single motherhood, like, w- just one day everyone was like, stigma's gone. We passed the law to remove the stigma from immoral behavior like what it's not how it works that's not the, 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 there is so much stigma for single motherhood and S- fucking still to this sexual day promiscuity still yeah S- like so much and it ben is a huge source of that but also like it's fucking rising rates of teen pregnancy sexually transmitted disease and emotional emptiness how do you measure emotional emptiness what study was like how emotionally full are you i mean and also <laughs> here's the thing he acts as if single motherhood happens in a vacuum people don't just wake up and yeah, as go people choose that a, a minority of people might you know choose to be single mothers and that like you might get ivf or something but majority of the time si- mm-hmm. single parenthood isn't planned right um Absolutely. And therefore, to act like, oh, I'm just going to do it because it's no longer stigmatized. It's like, no, it happens because of your life circumstances. Or conservative argument that like single mothers are bad and they never talk about the dads unless it's an excuse to be racist. Unless, Unless it's an excuse to be racist. But it's also like they fail to mention the fact that, you know, in communities with higher incarceration rates because they're more policed, it's like, mm-hmm. oh, well, the dads aren't present. And it's like, well, it's because you put the dad Where in jail they? for yeah. life for just having some weed on him. Mm-hmm. Like, calm the fuck. Oh. And teen pregnancy what as I well. Think- it's like rising rates of teen pregnancy. Those rates would fall with sex education. And so would single motherhood. Yeah. Yeah. And juvenile crime. 
But we're, I'm sure we're going to get to the paragraph eventually where Ben talks about how sex ed is indoctrinating children and teaching a nine-year-old what a condom is is literally pedophilia, even though Ben Shapiro is a big fan of the Republican Party that has no pedophiles in it. Come on. Oh, my God, Ethan. I just found a paragraph. Um, and it's basically talking about what a virgin is. And basically, he's saying that... Um, Let's just, let me just read it. I, I can't explain it. I'll yeah. just read it and then we can talk about it. <laughs> okay. Um, believe it or not, the number of young people who call themselves virgins is actually on the rise. But virgin often means that young people are having oral sex rather than vaginal intercourse. One study... <laughs> <laughs> One study by Peter Behrman of Columbia University and Hannah Brockner of Yale found that 88% of teens who took virginity until marriage pledges broke them. Why do you mm. think that is, Ben? <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. It's almost like uh, abstinence sex education doesn't work or something. Also, does and this not like, just say that virginity is just completely ridiculous? Like abstract, the whole concept of it, because yeah. it is abstract. Like, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I don't know about you, but when you were in school, like, I don't know. Basically, if you're talking about heterosexual sex, generally people um, don't can they consider you a virgin uh, until you've had like penetrative sex, like even if you've had like oral mm -hmm. sex and stuff. Whereas when you're queer, right. that that all goes out of the table, right? Because yeah it's not the same kind of sex necessarily. So <laughs> that's why it's, it's all made up. Virginity's made up. Yeah. I, I know it's a cliche, but it is a fucking construct, right? And so, Absolutely. <sighs> <laughs> it's so, this is, this is tiring. Oh my God. Okay, okay, okay. I'll read this little f tiny paragraph here and then I'll get you to take over on the next page, Ethan, okay? Okay. The social left touts sex without consequences as the reward for our abdication of societal morality. What a what a word salad. But sex, just yeah. like our abdication of so 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 societal morality, does have consequences. And you go. <laughs> Elections have consequences? More like sex has consequences. <laughs> These are not victimless acts. The high percentage of sexually active young people is wreaking enormous da damage to the emotional stability of my generation. Both girls and boys who are sexually active before marriage are more likely to be depressed and attempt suicide. No, no source there. A full, <laughs> full 25.3% of sexually active girls say they are depressed all say they are depressed all most or a lot of the time only seven percent seven point seven percent of non-active girls feel that way a shocking 14.3 percent of girls who are sexually active have attempted suicide 5.1 percent of non-sexually active girls have while 60.2 percent of sexually inactive girls report that they are rarely or never depressed while 36.8 percent of sexually active girls feel that way man really just a lot of great writing here, Ben. <laughs> just just putting the statistic there with no fucking... Like, there's nothing... It, it's just hard to read. <laughs> Let's skip a bit. Okay, you know what? Um, we're about to finish this little introduction. So shall we just mm -hmm. pick... Shall we pick a paragraph? Oh, wow. I just saw... I just saw 10-year-old girls should not have anorexia. And I agree. But what's... I would love to know what the framing of it is there. So... They have anorexia because they're having sex. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. It's not societal beauty standards. It's the... Ooh. They're having sex. Ethan, do you, could you do me a yeah. favor? Um, yes. And read from... It is also an attempt to reach out to my peers, just because I think it's quite funny okay. the next thing he says. Do you want me to read the uh, paragraph before for context? Oh, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go okay. On. This book is meant to force us to re-examine the true consequences of tolerating immorality and the oversexed society in which we live. If we clearly see the... If we see clearly the moral pit which we have dug for ourselves, maybe we can stop digging and maybe, just maybe, restore the standards that have served American society so well in the past. Oh my god, what the fuck? <sighs> it is also an attempt to reach out to my peers. Yes, sex is fun. 
and good in the Don't believe you, Ben. Don't believe you, Ben. I don't believe you for a fucking minute, mate. (laughs) Would you describe sex as fun and good? (laughs) Don't believe you, mate. Don't Don't believe a word that comes out your mouth. Mm -mm. Let's think about... (laughs) I think it's the... Yeah. Let's think about the perspective... The prospective children. Do we want our kids growing up in the over-sexualized world that we do? Let's learn from history. Let's not the re- repeat the mistakes of our parents' generation. Yeah, little known fact, no one had sex before 1980. Yeah, it's true. Ever. It all made in a lab. was a sexless time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I mean, this is just... Uh, I... I... Uh, I... I... I I think that's good for this this chapter. I think we should just carry on yeah. to the next one. Um, that's just the intro. Yeah, he's that's not even just the intro. getting into the real shit. Okay. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, oh, okay. Um, this is weird. Um, so the chapter, this chapter is called, just to, just to remind us, um, page 22. So this chapter is called... A generation lost. Yeah, that's that was no, the first chapter. No, that was the one. Sorry, I'm being I'm being silly. This chapter is called Oh fucking hell, sorry. I'm I'm just I'm getting confused <laughs> by my scrolling. You're all good. Okay, this okay, so this is chapter two, and it's the fun with bananas one. <laughs> so this is about a girl called Katie who might be real and might not be, but let's just, let's just, I, I'm just going to open with the quote. Um, yeah, she does have a source next to her, so. Oh, okay. Well, maybe she is maybe real. Maybe she's cited. Okay, so let's, let's read the second chapter and it's about a girl called Katie. So, um, so. I another I. Uh, I okay, I was nine years old in fourth grade, says Katie, a cute 22-year-old suburban girl from the Northeast. She's a brilliant Harvard Law student and a relatively happy person. At her upper, mid- upper middle class elementary school, she had her first brush with sex ed. Porn generation style. Um, okay. One day they told us they were going to teach about family life. They didn't separate us or anything. They said that people could engage in oral, anal and regular sex, but they didn't explain what the terms meant. I can't remember any moral judgments being made. They gave us booklets with line drawings of what happens as puberty progresses. They also told us that sex can get you pregnant and that it can give you diseases. There was a lot of focus on HIV. They said that the only way to be 100% safe was abstinence. Then they sent all the girls to the nurse who told us that if we bled, we weren't dying and handed out maxi pads and tampons. Um, Unacceptable. Unacceptable. So he goes on to talk about how Katie's parents were given the option to opt out, but they chose not to because they're heathens. Evil. According Mm -hmm. to Katie, she got sex ed nine times over every year from fourth to twelfth grade. The classes were co-ed all the way through. In seventh grade, they were showing condoms. We made balloons out of them and they had a goodie (laughs) box full of birth control implements, condoms and diagrams. Um... Diaphragm. Diaphragm, sorry. Um, Okay, okay. Katie believes that sex ed is a good thing for kids to hear. The disease and pregnancy stuff was good because it scared people off. They realized that there were consequences to sex. There should be education about it and that there are... So that there are less half-truths and complete lies floating around and people can make an informed decision. That's a good point, Katie. Because... (laughs) Just yeah. the next sentence. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, oh, here's the, here's the moral judgment. Ben then goes on to say mm-hmm. this. Katie <laughs> isn't a virgin, and she isn't ashamed of it. <laughs> she became sexually active at the age of 19 and has had three sexual partners. There's nothing wrong with premarital sex, she tells me. I got over that idea. I feel I can make rational decisions armed with what I learned in nine years of the same class repeating. Sex is appropriate when the person is mentally ready to have sex and when it's not a result of pressure to fit in and when she's mature enough to still not have any regrets. Um, 
does this is it just me or does this read especially with the way he opened like she's a cute midwestern girl at harvard law which where ben also studied and he would have been 26 so he would probably be graduating uh from law school at this point Mm. it sounds like someone he met and wanted to interview as an excuse to talk to her because ben doesn't know how to talk to women yes and then like slowly as he learned more about how she was a normal person and had sex a normal amount and had three partners, God forbid, yeah, at the 19. age of, what, 24? 19 is, um, like, uh, if I believe, I don't know about back then, but now that's, like, a ty- mm-hmm. it's a little bit later than average. So, if anything, yeah. like, she's more, uh, whatever Ben wants. More Ben's you know? type. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, um, But, like, his, his descriptions of her are, like, souring as we go. Oh, it's so sour. Katie is an above-average girl and would be considered, in this day and age, a sexually well-adjusted citizen. Her views on sex education and sex in general are shared by many of her peers. Premarital sex isn't seen as wrong, as long as you're ready for it and sex education is supposed to prepare you for it. With this kind of logic, it's not hard to see why kids are being sexualized at younger and younger ages. The younger the kids are when sex ed begins, the more they know at a younger age. The more they know, the more prepared they are. The more prepared they are, the more societal approval they will receive when they do have sex. And societal approval means societal encouragement. Sorry, societal approval, but... Two paragraphs ago, he said, Still, Katie doesn't want her parents to know about her sexual history because they still think it's wrong. She also didn't have sex till she was 19 like is does that not imply that her sex education delayed it a bit and like she even said that herself she was like well we were scared of getting stis i also love that ben included the fact that the uh boys and girls were taught in the same class as like it was a bad thing when it's like hey it's probably because the school was underfunded and had a lack of resources and literally couldn't separate them because you know america in the early 2000s but also, like, what? Why would that be a bad thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I and yeah. <laughs> it's that sex education was sorry. That sex education was like very similar to my experience, where it's like, yeah, they'll teach you about sex, but they'll focus a lot more on STDs and tell you like the abstinence is the best prevention. Like, what? It's like clearly not like i mean i didn't get like the multiple years i got it like twice Mm -hmm. but like what she laid out was pretty similar to what i remember and like how does ben want to make that more conservative that's already pretty conservative Mm. with like how focused it is on like reproduction and stds and stis and like prevention like what does ben want to do just say I mean, I know what he wants to do. He wants to tell kids that, you know, you should only have sex to have children and anything other than that is moral deprivation or depravity, I should say. Yeah. So he references another girl, a 23-year-old black woman from Harvard Law uh, called April Cornell, who said this, uh, being a teenager sucks. Teenagers have way more choice today than they had 50 years ago. Uh, okay. Uh, I have way more choice than my parents did when they were 15 or 16. It never would have occurred to my mom not to decide to not to decide not to decide not to have sex or to decide not to use drugs. There are decisions that I had to make as opposed to this is the way it is. I think kids are being forced into choices they aren't ready to handle. What? Wait, you do realize that's bad right to to, to just be like oh well we have choices now so that means we have to think like rather than being forced like and also to say that wow what a bizarre kids these days kids these days have so many choices to make we should bring it back to the old days where no one made any choices i just (laughs) like uh... your parents grew up in the 70s and you're really gonna tell me that they were never offered drugs (laughs) I mean, I just, oh, wow, wow. Okay, this is, yeah, go on. What are your thoughts, Ethan? I, too many. Yeah, I know. (laughs) 
I just want to... It's very overwhelming. Yeah, let's start from here at the bottom. It didn't take... um, So with growing sexual licentiousness and the beginnings of moral decline in 1920s, sex education became more and more prevalent. Oh, God forbid. Um, No. I... You know what? I'm going to skip a bit because this all just seems like Mm -hmm. a bunch of... um, Oh my god, wait. Yeah, this is just the history of sex ed. Yeah, history of sex ed. It's not very interesting. Well, I mean, it is interesting, but like it's not interesting with Ben's framing. Yeah, I love this little uh, bunch. Yeah, I don't want Ben's perspective. This little, little nugget. Self esteem, code for narcissism. I. Th- ben has some just twisted perspective. We already know. I mean, yeah. But like the little insights you get into who he is as a person. And how, what he probably thinks of himself is like, oh, it's like a, it's like a fucking, it's like a Greek tragedy, you know. He's a complex character. <laughs> I just, I, I love that. I just, what a guy, what a guy. Um, like, how could you just think everything that's good is bad? <laughs> <laughs> Self-esteem, aka narcissism. Uh, sex is bad. Sex education is bad. Being gay is bad. These are all good things, man. <laughs> oh, and then he goes into some long ass rant, which I won't uh, make you endure about how oral sex is real sex, which I mean, I agree with. Um, but he, sure. he basically yeah. says that um, the the Clintons uh, were the ones that kind mm. of propagated that because they wanted, you know, the whole Bill Clinton gate thing you know i did not have sexual relations you know that's the reason they wanted to downplay oral sex because you know Mm -hmm. um to make that look less bad yeah um yeah i think (laughs) the best way to to talk about sex is from a perspective of litigation Mm, always always (laughs) oh my it's like what does the law say sex is this is so interesting he's going on oh let's read this bit ethan this looks juicy oral sex outside of marriage is still extramarital sex denial of that fact is simply defining deviancy down what's this whole defining up and down thing just yeah such well, odd that's phrasing. not a thing that people say no Boys and girls degrade the sex act to the level of kissing and still consider themselves virgins, even though they have engaged in promiscuous extramarital sex. When they get married as virgins, in quotation marks, (laughs) they breach a sacred trust between husband and wife. If the point of virginity until marriage is to keep sexual activity with moral boundaries, oral sex is betrayal of that ideal. It's almost as if, like, the whole idea of only wanting someone who's a virgin before marriage is a stupid idea anyway, Ben. Mm -hmm. And it's antiquated and comes from a history of like pedophilia, but whatever. Yeah. Also, he repeats the whole thing of, he repeats another study, like a survey, which shows people who describe themselves as virgins having had oral sex and this, and like how oral Mm -hmm. sex doesn't count. And it's like, okay, so Ben, what's, like, Why is Ben gatekeeping virginity right now? Yeah, he just he's just like, no! <laughs> he really hates blowjobs. Yeah, you guys aren't real virgins. I'm a real virgin. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here's the bottom line. Without the Lewinsky scandal, millions of children would not have had to hear about um, this issue until reaching maturity. Instead, oral sex and masturbation with cigars became topics of conversation in classrooms and around dinner tables throughout the country. <laughs> agonized mother of four you want a source on that or? yeah yeah agonized mother of four elizabeth avery shelton expressed it in her letter um i would like it to be known before her movie book and deal comes out that i want an apology from lewinsky for being solely responsible for me having to explain oral sex to my four children ages 12 to 8 clinton and his media cronies owe parents an apology as well unfortunately an apology just won't cut it at this point the ship has left the dock you know what's interesting here ethan that she said lewinsky first Let's talk about that. Very interesting. Yeah, I like that. I like that uh, she's blaming the 18-year-old staffer. Yeah. Rather than the president. Yeah, and he abused his position of power by receiving oral sex from an intern. 
Yeah, a teenage intern. That is wow. But 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 the mother's like, oh, now my kid knows what blowjobs are, and that's Monica Lewinsky's fault. Yeah, and it's what a tragedy that my child knows something. Yeah. I like why do you feel like you have to describe to your eight year old exactly what it is? First of all, you could just be like, that's adult things. That's complicated. Like, there's so many ways you can dismiss it for your eight-year-old if you really don't want to talk about it. But also, like, what? Like, I feel like conservatives are like, you either keep them in the dark until they're 38 years old and married, or you tell them about the Gluck Gluck 9000 when they're four years old. Those are the only options. <laughs> I, I mean, honestly, uh, it's... I... Like I should, I should write a letter to Ben Shapiro, uh, complaining and demanding an apology from Matt Gates for me having to describe to my child uh, what pedophilia is. Yeah. Also, I want him. I, 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 I'm gonna read this next paragraph, and I think it, it, it mm-hmm. I think I'm curious. What does he think the goal of people who are pro-sex said, like? He, he, I don't know. It's just odd to me. He seems to think that there's like mm-hmm. some nefarious motives and that the people, people yeah. want kids to be educated about sex because they want to sexualize kids, which is not the case. And it's just so interesting no. because people who are very pro abstinence tend to sexualize kids more. They're the ones who are like, oh, if a girl wears a spaghetti strap, that's sexual. And it's like, you're the one who's saying mm-hmm. that. So, absolutely. Okay. Okay, social, okay, this is so odd. Social liberals can't get away with stating their goals out loud, so they hide behind the screen of youth autonomy. They're just giving kids respect, they say. They're just providing full information. It is this perverse view of child autonomy that has led to wild, widespread abortion rights for children. What the (laughs) fuck are you talking about, Ben? The kids were old enough and smart enough to have sex. And now they're old enough and smart enough to get an abortion without parental notification. Um, This was 2005. Yeah, like, yeah. And he basically um, talks about how, yeah, Democrats who were sort of advocating for children to be able to access, children, teenagers to be able to access, you know, I mean, they are children and fetus, but you right. know my point. He, it, it's interesting because he's like, he's not making it clear that these are like teenagers, sexually active teenagers, yeah. rather than like fucking nine year olds, right? Right? Like, yeah, he's doing that on purpose. He's leaving it vague after having talked about sex ed uh, from that one girl, you know, starting at nine years grade, old in yeah. fifth grade, and now he's just saying mm-hmm. children over and over again, and it's like, okay, sixteen and nine are different, Ben, like. Yes. I love abortion rights in quotes, too. Just rights. Yeah. Civil rights. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I just, I mean, I it's ben. pretty amazing. He's great. <laughs> I love Ben, too. Stand I mean, ben. I think we'll finish off this chapter, and then that might be it for today, because it's mm-hmm. already, there's already so much yeah. that I think we, we, we'll have to break this down into parts. So let's just to. read a couple more bits from this chapter. Um, do you want to read from We're Now at a Crisis Point? Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, I kind of want to start from the combination of par- parental abdication Oh, gosh, yeah, go for it. Do it. I think think that one's good, too. Yeah, do it, do it. The combination of parental abdication and social liberalism in our schools means that kids are easy targets for nihilism and moral subjectivism. He keeps bringing up nihilism. What the fuck are you talking about? Mm -hmm. He's just saying it because it sounds scary. (laughs) Mm. Ironically, by mm-hmm. destroying parental authority with regard to morality, social liberals got more than they got bargained for. Rampant drug, alcohol, and tobacco use. Almost three quarters of suburban 12th graders and 71% of urban 12th graders have tried alcohol more than two or three times. Oh no. 40% of 12th... Where are my 12th graders are 16, 17? I, yeah, I was right? 17 when I correct? graduated 12th grade. Most of my friends were 18. <laughs> And that's like, right, that's the okay. drinking age in the oh. UK, right? 18? Yeah, yeah, it's 18. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, 18 year olds drinking. 
or having tried alcohol. God forbid. Um, God forbid. <laughs> more than 60% of suburban 12th graders have tried cigarettes. Okay, Ben, why don't you t- take that up with your fucking big tobacco funders? Like, that literally has to do with big tobacco advertising and making fucking cigarettes easy to get your hands on. That has nothing to do with porn or mm-hmm. sex. <sighs> yeah, well... We're now at a crisis point, and parents are beginning to wake up. A poll released in February 2003 by Zogby International showed strong support for abstinence education and a remarkable antipathy toward the liberal social messages taught in comprehensive sex ed. Like, you have not described comprehensive sex ed, but whatever. For example, 71% of parents disapproved of teaching a middle school child ages 12 to 15 to unroll a condom and place it on a finger, banana, or wooden model of a penis. I mean, by 15, like, that's... You're fucking crossing into dangerous territory. There are plenty of 15-year-old pregnancies. Like, not teaching a child or a 15-year-old person... 15-year-old child how to use a fucking condom is not a good thing. You should teach them how to use a condom. No, that's... Yeah. Another 71% disapproved Mm. of telling children ages 9 to 12 that homosexual love relationships can be as satisfying as heterosexual love relationships. That's fucking bullshit. That's insane. Even more so. That's not even (laughs) sexual. You're literally just saying gay people exist and love each other and that's normal. But 71% disapprove of telling children 9 to 12 that. Because no children are gay. You choose to be gay at a certain point. Mm. That's that's literally where that mm. argument has to go. That's the natural progression. A plurality, 46% to 39%, disapproved of telling 14 to 18-year-olds, 18 18-year-olds, 18 okay, I'm not talking about children anymore, Ben, that teenagers can obtain birth control pills from family, parents, and clinics, and doctors without permission from a parent. Literally, if you're 18, you certainly don't need permission from a parent, but like... 14 even still they should at least know that there are resources for them Mm -hmm. like ben you're Mm -hmm. creating teen pregnancy and single parenthood do you not understand this you're literally so it's like like, people (sighs) act like it's such a bad thing yeah that kids uh can get it without their parents permission you don't know that child's background you don't know how their parent might react to the fact that they've been sexually active first of all you don't know if it's an abuse situation Mm -hmm. secondly you don't know like how yeah how their parents going to react and that that them having to get parent parental permission delays the likelihood of you know them making a decision yeah and you know it's just ugh. i love the ideas that ben like throws out here and he does this to this day where he looks at all of these issues as like completely separate like because mm. this is absolutely a queer issue too like not being able to mm-hmm. as a queer person be able to like obtain birth control or something or like if you know two gay teenagers are you know they want to use condoms because they want to be safe like if a homophobic parent found out about that that the, one of those teenagers could be homeless or could be beaten or could mm. be sent to conversion therapy which mm. i'm sure ben advocates mm-hmm. for and definitely advocated I mean, for he would this love time that. Yeah, so it's like yeah. you're creating the problems that you're you're blaming on porn, and Ben knows this. He's smart enough to understand this, although I don't think he's very mm. smart. Um, but like, he had to look at studies to obtain the studies that he found that he's using to confirm his own biases. But like, I know he knows the truth, and that's the most frustrating part mm. about him. Right. Do you want to, before we wrap it up, um, go back to the yeah. chapter select and just find one one section that seems particularly really yes. funny just from anywhere? Yeah, I agree. As a treat. Yeah, yeah. Pick our favorite little, <laughs> mm-hmm. as a little treat. Yeah, you're, you're right. Okay, so what have we got here? Which ones? Um, oh, oh God, there's, there's so, so many. Good. Okay. Uh, um, I mean, I, I it's one of, it's four or five for me. Mm-hmm. They both look hilarious. Yeah, I really got to see what the... What do you reckon? I really want to see Playa Haters and also the one with the slur in it. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, so just, chapter we, five. Yeah. Where, <laughs> where pimps, pimps and, and whole... Hoz, <laughs> H-O-S, run free. Okay, shall we... Let's just see... Yeah, chapter... Yeah, okay. the, just, this is just um, the racism chapter. <laughs> oh, wow! Literally, it opens with John Kerry finds rap music fascinating okay he puts music in in quotation marks because i guess to him rap isn't music 
It's not. It's just a bunch of noise. Even though he's a classically trained musician, so he should understand the nuances that rap has as a genre. But he doesn't. He refuses to because it's made by black people. Even though rock and roll is also made by black people and blues and jazz. <laughs> oh, wow. So, I, 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 I just... Oh no, I'm I'm skimming through this. This is so bad. I don't know yeah, if I want my voice bad. saying this. <laughs> he okay, I I okay, so <laughs> I, I apologize in advance, trigger warning, racism. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um Ben says basically his framing is that he says that John F. Carey um sort of uh sort of mentioning the connection between like uh rap as part of black culture well okay here's what ben says to portray rap as vital to black culture as Kerry did is a subtle form of racism which is really rich coming from ben mm, he knows racism the arbiter of racism yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like ben you like the way you talk about black americans is just abhorrent yeah. so yeah. And also, he says, it assumes that violence and misogyny are integral to black lifestyle. Ben, you love misogyny. And violence. He's a huge fan of the police. I just... I just... I mean... Okay, let's get to the next page. Um, Hang on, sorry. Can I... I just... I want to read something from this page. Um, because I think oh, Ben... Oh, no. Oh, God. I yeah, think I Ben think makes I a really be. great Go on. Here. While Carrie was bothered by rap li- lyrics advocating cop killing and felt that sometimes lyrics in some songs have stepped over what I consider to be a reasonable line, he refused to advocate government sub- censorship of such lyrics. Yeah, libertarian, by the way. Uh, hey, if anyone knows what it's like to be held down by the man, it's John F. Carrie. He had to bus a few caps in Vietnam, you know, to protect the brothers and all. Um, I don't know what he means by that. Uh, <laughs> it's also just so funny because Ben oh. is that like classic person who is like the right wing, like don't, uh, don't, uh, you know, what's the word? Take the knee during the national anthem because it's disrespectful yeah. to the troops. Bear mm-hmm. in mind, Jar and F. Kerry like fought in Vietnam, which was like, a very brutal and needless war. I yeah. mean, all Fake wars war. are needless, but like, especially, you know, um, Ben has, and the same goes for me. Ben has all, all he's done is sit in a university classroom. He's mm-hmm. never had to do that. Yeah. He's never had to do national service or anything like that. So for him to mock, <laughs> like a veteran this way, it's just so ironic. Just no, conservatives him, get like, that because they, they, claim patriotism so no matter what Mm. they say it's patriotic even if like if i if ben shapiro saw a video of me or some tiktoker with blue hair saying you know john f Kerry is a you know is a fraud and his you know fight in vietnam is not legitimate or whatever i mean it wasn't i'll make fun of him for being in vietnam but if he saw me doing that Mm. he would say well this is exactly what the left does they like to uh, take down our institutions and yeah we may may have lost the war in vietnam but you have to be respectful to the troops and it's like shut the fuck up dude like it's it's so frustrating how he can get away with literally whatever he wants um i mean he gets to be racist and make fun of veterans at the same time and i want to make fun of veterans the hell <laughs> right right you know and he, so then ben quotes al sharpton yeah. um who said um that civil rights marchers didn't march so that a rapper quote unquote has the right to call your mama a hoe okay yeah like because that's what all rap is right exactly it's not like a reflection of material conditions or like you know like a story yeah, about also... <sighs> marginalization. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Um, oh, cool. I ben just... wrote a bunch of the N word in that uh, and the F slur. There's a bunch of slurs. Oh my God. In like the third paragraph. Oh, I mean, they're in, Lord. they're in quotes, but I mean, I feel like, Oh, so that explains the warning on the, on the cover of the book. Oh yeah. The very out of place warning. Man, he just wrote a bunch of 
lyrics. What the fuck? Wait, 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 wait. I'm so sorry. Third paragraph, a lot of slurs. Yeah. On the right, on the top paragraph, shit is blur- uh, censored, bitch is censored, pussy is censored. Are you fucking kidding me, Ben? Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Ben just wanted a fucking excuse to write slurs in his book. There's no fucking way. Wow. That is an interesting editorial choice. Yeah. Um, Ben. Oh, here's a funny, here's a funny. So (sighs) after he's written all that, the sad part is this kind of language isn't even the most extreme. (sighs) It's the mainstream. Literally millions of children are hearing this kind of garbage every day. Almost 25% of CDs sold in the US in 2003 were hip hop or R&B. Hip hop is the second biggest music genre, according to the Recording Industry Association of America. You can't pull up a stuff. Uh, you can't pull up at a stoplight anymore without hearing a booming subwoofer thumping with the sound vibrations of rap. Okay. The rap culture the rap is a culture real cancer. Is yeah. For the black, for the black community. community. So you know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of that quote by that guy. I can't remember his name, but the one on you know the one who's this is sampled in a Kendrick Lamar song. Um, the guy mm-hmm. on Fox News who says like rap music has done more damage for the black community than mm-hmm. racism or some shit. This, yeah. this, this reeks of that. This, this, this is giving that. Well, it's, it's really funny that even in the early two thousands, this was still true that the majority of people, more white people consume rap than black people because there are more mm-hmm, white people, but mm-hmm. still it's, how is it not a cancer on white culture, which I'm sure Ben, would say it is. I mean, white culture doesn't exist, but you know what I mean. I'm sure Ben is using this uh, as like some greater argument to say that like rap is not only bad for the black community, but it's also corrupting the white community. Um, oh my God. Which is just not true. It's just not. Ethan, yes. my dear, could you please read from walk into any high school in the United States? Uh-oh. Could Uh-oh. you please read that? Pra- it's so good. Walk into any high school in the United States and you can see teenagers, black, white, Hispanic, whatever, in baggy pants doing the pimp roll. They imitate the dress style and the bad grammar using phrases like faux shizzle my nizzle. The common high school greeting is sup biatch. These are ridiculously stupid phrases popularized by the criminal slash thug slash rapper slash actor (laughs) Snoop Dogg. (laughs) Here's Snoop Dogg's explanation of his babblings. Faux shizzle. This has many different meanings. It means for real, for sure. I'll use it in a sentence to let you understand. Uh, Check this out. Doggy fizzle televizzle. Is gonna be off the hizzle for shizzle. Thanks, Mr. So Dog. What it means. Yeah, yeah, that clears everything up. David Letterman put it best. I have no idea what the fizz fizzuck I'm talking about. Haha. <laughs> um, Holy shit, that is a dense paragraph of racism. Oh my god, it gets worse though. Um the oh uh, so god. he talks about how Okay, so he says this. Um, One of the most important record labels in rap was Death Row Records, responsible for the rise of rappers Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, Tupac. um, And the Death Row logo depicts a blindfolded black man strapped into an electric chair. The logo is emblematic of the sometimes fictional, sometimes all too real track of the rap industry. Thugs rap. I hate that you use the words thug. I know. Ooh, such a dog whistle. Get mm-hmm. famous, make money, and then kill someone or are murdered. Of course, it, it isn't the criminal justice system or media giving rappers a bad name. It's the fact that they're criminals. I love <sighs> this complete aside from the entire premise of the book just to be racist. Yeah. This has what's nothing this to, do to do with, with sex. <laughs> I just, I just, oh my God. And also Ben literally refers to someone as a druggie in the next paragraph. It's like, this is real high literature, Ben. Yeah. I just, I, oh I just, my God. so much here. Rap um, is inextric- inextricably linked to thuggery. Thuggery. <sighs> Incredible. Yeah, and I 
I I think we'll skip these next few just because. Yeah. Um, oh wait, this is how it relates to sex. Um, they're thugs with regard to violence, and they're thugs with regard to women. Make as much money as you uh, make as you can, and have as much sex as humanly possible. Explains uh, Consuela Francis, assistant professor of African American literature at the College of Charleston. Sex is never an expression of love, but instead an expression of lust. With rappers acting though. At as though they're dogs in heat. <sighs> what in the, the rap fuck? view, yeah. In the rap view, women are all bi- bitches and hoes, and men are pimps. It's a repulsively misogynistic view. Ben, you can't talk about misogyny, and yeah, one that can't. affects both boys and girls. Boys learn that it's okay to treat women like dirt. These contemporary buffoons, vulgarians, and misogynists are defined as the purest black young men, and the ones who are quote unquote keeping it real. In the words of New York. Um, columnist new york times columnist stanley crouch girls learn that boys want strippers and prostitutes and act accordingly women are defining themselves in reaction to what men want rather than what they want um says Torre, pop culture like, correspondent for cnn what the fuck you can make the argument that patriarchal structures do determine the way girls act dress whatever mm-hmm. but that's not exclusive to rap and black people ben like he's literally no. blaming it just on black people in general as if, like, like rock insane. stars and rock bands don't talk about fucking groupies. And well, and it, as if fucking, like, yeah, some of the fucking classic rock bands were literally, like, fucking hanging out with, like, 14-year-old groupies in the 70s. Like, Oh, my God. There's a paragraph about 50 Cent, Ethan. Do you want to read and there's it a, from the top? There's also a paragraph about Pimp Juice. I love that song. <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny song. Oh, yeah. Um, 50 Cent, who won several New Artist Awards for his first album, has several songs focused on sex, which, you know, no other artist ever does. Mm. Only rappers. <laughs> In Candy Shop, a sex-obsessed tune which spent more than six weeks as America's number one music video on MTV, he intones to his prostitute girlfriend, I take you to the candy shop, I'll let you lick the lollipop. This is literally just WAP. This whole book is just him, or this whole chapter is just him doing the WAP thing yes. over and over again. But you just, I, that's all I'm hearing in my head. But with vintage songs. Like yeah, with the songs, songs from the early 2000s, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, girl, don't you stop, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I'll break it down for he you. He the song, yeah. Yeah, he's just doing the song. God, he really just keeps going. Uh, for the whole rest of the paragraph, rapper Nelly, one of the most famous artists in quotes of his genre, has songs entitled Pimp Juice. She only want me for my pimp juice. Thicky, thick girls looking like a lollipop waiting for the lick girl. <laughs> Rap summed in. Weed is actually a medicine for me, you know. And though, though dem rappers... <laughs> Fuck a bitch and which he censored. Uh, and some clothes. But not, but not the word, the F not, word, not the F slur for. Not the F slur, not the N word. Yeah. Um, for this wonderful contribution to society, Nelly won favorite male singer at the 2004 Nickelodeon, <laughs> Nickelodeon yeah. Kids Choice Awards. <laughs> That's that. really That's funny. So funny. The most yeah. popular black women's magazine in the country finally let loose with its frustration over the horrific depiction of women in rap in its January 2005 issue. Ben, you can't be like a women's ally. You can't be like, the feminists are right about this one when you have a whole chapter dedicated to how feminism is ruining society and creating sexual yeah. promiscuity. Because he then quotes from, um, you know you know, sort of um, articles written by black women sort of complaining about mm-hmm. misogynistic l- rap lyrics, which is, you know, very valid, but yeah. it's just funny that it's Ben doing it. Right. When he would only, he's only agreeing with them in this one instance so he can be racist. When, like, if this was about any other artist that was white, he would he would say it, it, they're invalid and they're just triggered SJWs. I, I just... Also, I love that he quotes um, Stan- the Stanley Crouch again, that columnist. Nobody white would be allowed to get away with selling such a product, like misogynistic rap. Um, it's about time we started seeing some equality. Oh, I love irony, don't you, Ethan? Oh, my God. Eminem was around in 2005. Yeah, he, he has he misogynistic lyrics. Yeah, what the fuck? 
he literally had won a Grammy by this point, maybe even more than one. I yeah, amazing, amazing. Yeah, I think there's so much more potential here. We we could make it a running series. It'd be beautiful. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, the, this. The, you know how earlier you talked about um, the the W like uh, quote unquote. Uh, the, there's a subsection about white. Yeah, white. Yeah. Uh, and then that, but with W in front of the N word, um, yeah. he goes into that, and I think he's talking about white rappers. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh God. I didn't even know where to begin there. Um, he, so he's talking about what I just, there's so much here. I feel like we don't have time to get into all that I today, but know. we can next yeah. time. Um, Absolutely. That's enough for today. I think I'm quite tired mentally. Yeah, was, um, this was exhausting. That was exhausting. Um, do, do we, yeah, do you want to give uh, your review so far, Ethan? What are your thoughts? <sighs> mm, so far, uh, I mean, as a, if it was a satire of the way Ben Shapiro thinks and talks, 10 out of 10. Beautiful. It's hilarious. Yes. Um, as a real book that Ben wrote, zero, is a zero. It's very racist and misogynistic and homophobic. It's it hits all the marks, really. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. I just What's What is your review? <laughs> I think it's um quite repetitive. It is. He makes the same points again and again like with the whole thing about um the thing with blowjobs like oh if you've given a blow if you've uh -huh. received or given oral sex you're not a virgin. Like he repeated that yeah. in several paragraphs. And we were skipping around um, too. Yes, and we were. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know how someone sat through and read this whole thing because I was getting bored of him making the same point <laughs> again and again and again. Yeah. And I love how he weaponizes, you know, misogyny as if he's not a massive misogynist. Yeah, it, like, it's very, in, it's indicative of how he works. He will weaponize anything that pretend that only in the moment serves his his agenda but he'll drop it as soon as it stops serving him. You Whether it's Republican senators. Very, yeah. yeah, exactly. I am excited for the chapter, I believe it's chapter four, that was titled Pop Tarts. Where he Yeah. Mm. That's gonna be interesting. I, I don't even yeah. know what that could mean. Well, I have a feeling he's talking about like starlets, like Disney starlets who are sexualized. Oh. And how it's their fault, probably. <laughs> yeah. Like with the whole that mother complaining about Mon Monica Lewinsky owes my children an apology. Fuck off. Yeah. No, and and like you think Ben would like at least give his like opinion on like well, while it's not fair to to blame the teenage staffer because he hates Bill Clinton so much, you think he would focus on that? Yeah. But I, I think you know it's like does he hate Bill Clinton more? Or does he hate women more? You know, it's, <sighs> it's, eh, a tough, it's a tough one, for isn't him. it? Yeah. yeah, Democrats or women. <laughs> Democrats who are women. Oof. That's why he never Double. shuts up about AOC. Are you kidding? Right. A Democrat woman Kamala. of color. Ooh. Yeah. No, no, no. Don't want that, <laughs> do we? Um, but yeah, thank you so much for enduring this with me, Ethan. I couldn't have done oh, this anytime. on my own. Um, this even, was a blast. You know, I get by with a little help from my friends. Yeah, this was... And thank you for finding it. Um, yeah, of course. So we didn't have to buy it in Minecraft. <laughs> yeah i'm it. sorry it was extra legal it was yeah really it was legal. so legal the way we uh got this book um mm -hmm. do you want to uh people if you enjoyed this let us know in the comments um uh, you know we we'd love to read more of this but you know only if you love is a it. strong word but yeah I'll read it again <laughs> i you know i i've enjoyed hanging out with you yeah if you hate, yeah. hate this book we we can just hang out and do something more more interesting <laughs> and you know pleasant next time we hang on right. the pod but um do you want to tell the people where they can find you ethan yeah uh i have a youtube channel ethan is online um we i talk about very similar things uh political mm -hmm. stuff youtube stuff it's fun it's a good time 
um, or you mm-hmm. can follow me on Twitter if you just want to see pictures of my dog and uh, yes, right. tweets about my band names that I think are funny. Uh, it's mm-hmm. at Pethin is online on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. So, Good stuff. Yeah. Thank you so much for well, having me, Tara. It was, of it was course, a blast. my pleasure. My pleasure. And this won't be the last time. Um, Yay. Yeah, make sure to check out Ethan's work. Love your videos. Um, love you. your tweets. And um, <laughs> yeah, shall we say goodbye in the classic Toy Story yeah. manner? Okay, mm-hmm. so in a three, a two, a one. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye, Bye-bye. now. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.